Hi everyone, welcome to today's video. My name is Steven Sunday from Greatest Design Consult, a leading name in construction project management. Today, I'll be teaching you how to develop a model to track the supply chain of your company asphalt production unit. So first of all, we're going to see the factors to consider when creating a model for asphalt production units. Number one is raw material quality. A model should consider analyzing and optimizing the raw materials characteristic. The factor number two is environmental impact. The model should incorporate factors like energy consumption, emissions, and waste management to minimize the environmental impact. Factor number two, or three, sorry, Production efficiency. The model needs to consider factors like production capacity, equipment utilization, process optimization, and workforce productivity. Factor number four, quality control. Um, this model needs to incorporate quality control measures like testing, protocols, statistical process controls, and feedback mechanism, while the last factor will be safety and maintenance. A model should consider safety protocols, preventive maintenance schedules, and equipment reliability. So we'll be creating a simple model using Microsoft Excel. So the material commonly used in producing asphalt in African countries are aggregate and bitumen, while diesel is used to power up the generators and also used to heat the bitumen. The following are the type of aggregate we use in producing asphalt, which are 2 to 10 mm, 5 to 15 mm, dust 15 to 22 mm. Now, when materials are received in the construction company, they go directly to the weigh bridge. What is weigh bridge? Weigh bridge is also known as weigh station or truck scale, which is a vital piece of equipment commonly used in construction companies and other industry. Its primary purpose is to accurately measure the weight of vehicles, including trucks and trailers carrying loads of materials or goods. The basic uses of weigh bridge are two. Number one, Material quantification, number two, quality control, number three, load management, four, cost management, five, compliance and regulation, six, data analysis and reporting. So, in this simple model, first of all, as we said, when material comes, it goes directly to the weigh bridge. So, in my quantity received, I'm going to assume the truck number to be. E E R whatever and then the supplier quantity will be let's assume it is three thousand no thirty seven thousand three hundred and then when it gets to my weigh bridge the first weigh was fifty seven thousand the second weigh was twenty thousand so the net way will be equals to f minus g okay so we're going to ensure that uh, we identify the type of material we're receiving. Assuming this material we're receiving is 2 to 10 mm, we're putting it in 2 to 10 here, which is already in tones. Okay, 
So, we receive 2 to 10 mm, which is in tones. And then we could all drag this again just to fill in the information. I zoom in, we receive this, but this time around. We're getting different type, let's say this is equal to this divided by a thousand. Okay. Okay, so So H seven divide by a thousand. Okay, so let's just make it like this and we go to the bitumen. You could just assume a figure receive two hundred tons of bitumen receive 20,000 liters of diesel right so we could still replicate this same thing for the materials distributed Now, welcome back. So, we're going to do this for quantity distributed also. Though, this time, we are not the receiver, but we are the supplier. So, we're just going to copy this just to save time. But if you have your way build there and you receive your materials, you can just fill in the information there. Okay, so I could just do it like this. Okay. All right. So that's good to go. So now we go to total quantity distributed. What we're going to do here is for the total quantity distributed for zero to five mm. I'm gonna take this off, delete this. Yeah, it's better now. So we're just going to take the sum of this, of distributed. We know two to 10 half just this. One, one, one. Okay, so we come here for two to ten. We could put one, one, one. All right, so for 515 mm, we check just 37. So we input 37 over here, 37 tones. Okay, all right, so we can just put in our tones for easy identification. Okay, so let's see what are the information do we have here? Oh, sorry about this. Okay, so bringing this in 148 and so for 1522 we're bringing out 148 so let's just assume we got like 30 tones of this yeah we distributed 30 tones outside there all right so we do this also for quantity received and just 
a zoom taking this off okay so we could just bring this also if you have your way build as i said before you could just copy it the way it is this is just for exercise so okay all right so we're good so we are done with the total quantity distributed total quantity receive quantity distributed and quantity receive okay so all right so now this is what we have to do to get our model running we're fixing our quantity receive with all the materials we need quantity distributed with all the materials we need and then we have two types of asphalt as i said before we have the binding and the wearing cost the difference between this is that most times in the wearing cost we don't have 1522 mm okay so i believe that's clear okay so most of these figures here were just created as the material received but normally you you're going to link the cells within this between this here total quantity received you're just going to link them together like this is you can just come here and is that for dust did i just take for dust okay let's see yeah that's for dust so we can just say for dust throughout today throughout the night we just have just 30 tones we can just do this okay 30 tones same also we could do it for when we come to distributed we can just go here distributed and take we can just link those cells together okay so all right all right good so now this is the main place that we have to fix in our formulas and we have to know what we're doing so it depends on the type of machine you use and the mix in which your organization have decided to uh, use so some might use 350 kg per tone some might use 130 kg per tone for 210 some might use 230 kg per tone for 515 mm some might use 1522 mm for 290 kg per tone and some use for bitumen 55 kg 50 kg some use 60 kg per tone and the diesel depend on the type of plant you use also the generator you use and stuff like that so the formula here is still the same thing yeah we multiply the tone produced by 0.35 which is we're converting this to tone already. The 350, we're converting it into tone by 350 divided by 1000, which will give us 0 0.35, and then we'll multiply it by this, right? Okay, so there's the same thing that goes around here. So that next time when you just fix in your formula, if we put in 30 was the total as we produce, it automatically does that. Same goes to the wearing cost when you fix it 20 okay when you fix it 20 automatically it solves everything for you all you have to do is to ensure you're fixing 
all of these formulas which are not far-fetched it's actually depend on what you guys have decided all right so to calculate the daily consumed we're going to plus the the quantity distributed the quantity in binding cost of that same material and the quantity in wearing cost which will be i8 p8 w8 which are this 11 105 and 50 okay i8 P8, W8, okay, so the balance, since we already have an opening balance here, which was stated from the beginning here, 290, we, need, we plus our opening balance plus receive aggregate minus the daily consumed. Okay, which is this opening balance 310 plus the received aggregate of 515 minus this daily consumed. That's how we get our balance. So we could just drag and drop. Okay, so that settles it for this segment. Finally, before we wrap up, we need to understand the elements of ownership costs. The elements of ownership costs are crucial when developing a model for an ASPRA production unit because they help assess the overall financial feasibility and profitability of the operation. By considering this element, one can make informed decision regarding the investment, operation, and management of the asphalt production unit. There are a few reasons why the elements of ownership costs are important, which are investment analysis, operational planning, cost control, financial analysis, and decision making. So now, what is ownership cost? Ownership cost is the cumulative result of those cash flows and owner experiences whether or not the machine is productively employed on the job. Most of ownership cash flows are expenses, but a few are cash inflows, and one serves to prevent a cash outflow. The most significant cash flow affecting ownership costs are purchase expense, salvage value, tax saving from depreciation, major repairs and overhauls, property tax, insurance, storage, and miscellaneous. We also need to understand the element of operating costs. Because the element of operating costs are important when developing a model. The element of operating costs are important when developing a model for an asphalt production unit because they directly impact the day-to-day -day expenses and profitability of the operation. By considering this element, one can accurately estimate the costs associated with running the asphalt production unit and make informed decisions regarding resource allocation, pricing, and operational efficiency. Operating costs is the sum of those expenses and owner experience by working a machine on a project. Typical expenses include the following. Fuel, lubricant, filters and grease, repairs, tires, replacement of high items. Globally, fuel expense is best determined by measurement on the job. Accurate service record communicates how many gallons of fuel a machine consumes over what period of time and under what job conditions. Hourly fuel consumption can then be calculated directly. For a simple model, I would just suggest we'll take this uh, to get the usage, we just Take this, when we get this from the odometer, divide by 70 liters to get the usage. 
But for a more elaborate um, explanation of a wheel loader, we could just take a look at this table, which is the average fuel consumption for wheel loaders. So, fuel consumptions can also be calculated on a theoretical basis. The resulting theoretical values must be adjusted by time and load factors to account for working conditions. This is because the theoretical formulas are derived based on the engine operating at maximum output. Two working conditions must be considered when estimating fuel consumption, the percentage of time and at what percentage of rated horsepower, which is the throttle load factor. When operating under standard condition, a gasoline engine will consume approximately 0.06 gallon of fuel per flywheel horsepower per hour. A diesel engine will consume approximately 0.04. So assuming we're going to use uh we're going to use a 220 horsepower kind of wheel loader and we are we are going to calculate the fuel consumption the simple way to do that assuming we, if we're going to calculate this you know we have to consider the throttle load so let's assume the throttle load is 0 0.9 0 0.9 0 0.9 okay let me just show you something most people won't teach you so zero point let's assume also the time factor is 0 0.092 and then remember i told you that uh, when you a diesel engine will approximately consume about 0 0.04 gallon per hour so so you can just multiply this also by 0 0.04 multiply by this 220 because we're using the 220 we'll multiply it and then so our final answer is 7.1 gallon per hour okay so for more elaborate we could incorporate this into our model but for just this simple model we could just use this okay so now the last stuff we're going to talk about is the salvage value Normally, salvage value is the cash inflow a firm receives if a machine still has value at the time of its disposal. There is a cash inflow that will occur at future date. So, for us to calculate salvage value, it's simple. We could just use this formula over here. We're going to use the annual sinking fund to get our salvage value so that we could know when to dispose, how much we're disposing this that we bought the wheel loader that we bought at $23,000. So using the annual sinking fund, we can just use this formula, this, and then we take a certain percentage, I wrote down 0 0.07, 0 0.7, or whatever. So you take, let's say you use 0 point this, you divide, and then you use your power function, right? Okay. So use your power function, and power function one plus this close bracket sorry so use the power function let me let me do this again so you use this formula. Let's use this. There's the interest. Divide by. We use the power function. Power function. Okay. Use the power function. One plus I, our interest. We use our life expectancy, our total life expectancy, close bracket, minus 
one. Okay. All right. Okay. So. Okay. There's an arrow here. So. Okay. Now we're good to go. So. So in order for you to just get your salvage value, you can just take this equals to this, multiply by this, okay? There you have it. You're selling your machine at 10 years, 10 years time for this amount. Same goes to this. So let's assume we're going to lock this cell, lock this formula. Just put it a dollar sign. Lock it properly. I want it to move. Okay. All right. So you can just drag and drop all of this. Yeah. So this is salvage value that we are going to sell this in the next 10 years, okay? Selling this in the next 10 years. But for the asphalt plant in which life expectancy is 20, we can come back again and rearrange the formula or create another spot for that. But, okay, so that's that for this model. You could contact us if you want any of our model if you want a better version because it's just a simple model don't forget at the end of the day you have to link the cells okay so for model we have this plant equipment and machine type shit we have production for asphalt we have quantity distributed quantity received total quantity distributed Quantity, total quantity received, consumption balance. So, thank you.